Hello friends, it's another Tuesday and I welcome you to The Mental Catalyst. I am Michael Amankoa. The Mental Catalyst or TMC is a show that seeks to empower everyone to achieve their purpose and full potential on earth. The last two weeks episode was episode 12 of season 4 titled The Eagle Has Landed. This was an episode I did from Moshi in, uh, in Tanzania prior to uh, hiking uh, Kilimanjaro. So today is going to be episode 13 of season 4 titled How Preparation and Self-Confidence Helped Me Summit Kilimanjaro. So today's title once more is How Preparation and Self-Confidence Helped Me Summit Kilimanjaro. So before I start, like anything else, I really, really, really want to thank the good Lord in heaven for making Kilimanjaro hike successful. I remember about 10 months ago when I, I went to him in prayers and I told him what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it, and what I needed from him, and uh, the contract we had. So this couldn't have been possible without the good Lord. So uh, I'm glad that he has used me as a vessel, as a messenger, coupled with everybody else who has been part of the journey, to make this uh, Kilimanjaro, the mountain and make Kilimanjaro successful. I, in anything else, uh, without his, his approval and his involvement, I don't think that it can be optimally successful. So first of all, I want to really, you know, uh, recognize, you know, my good Lord in heaven and appreciate him for blessing this dream and effort. So, that by God, you know, you know. Secondly, I want to also acknowledge and thank my parents, uh, who have loved me unconditionally ever since they gave birth to me till now. And even though I'm still, an, uh, I'm, a, I'm still a difficult child, uh, they found ways to still uh, deal with me and live with me and, 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 and support me with anything that I choose to do with caution and their blessings of course. I know that as their only child obviously it was very difficult for them uh, knowing very well that I was in a foreign land and uh, you know exposing myself, risking myself and uh, that alone I know was torturous. I know my mom, for example, you know, had a lot of sleepless nights because every day she would send me voice notes about it. And uh, so I know very well that it was difficult on their part, but I also want to recognize them for supporting me and loving me and, 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 and blessing me to do what I did. And thirdly, I also want to thank my TMC members, my TMC members, the mental catalyst members. You know, there are so many, and I would love to mention names, but I think it's only smart not to mention their names. There is no way, there's absolutely no way, you know, the Mountain and Mink Kilimanjaro would have been successful without the love and support of TMC members. You know, the, you know those who are in Ghana, those who are abroad and wherever, there's absolutely no way it would have been possible without them. So I want to use this opportunity to also acknowledge and sincerely thank them for, you know, uh, being part of this journey. It's been a long, difficult one. Uh, you know, it's taken us about close to about 11 months to really get this through. And uh, most of them played significant roles in it. So success, the success of Kilimanjaro belongs to all of TMC members as well. Then also I want to acknowledge and also you know, express my sincere gratitude to friends and other supporters on, on, on social media. I was actually very surprised the frenzy, you know, the build up, and then how anytime I posted updates, people were rooting and wishing me well, and you know, it was just like insane. I've never experienced anything like that. A person who, as a person who doesn't really do a lot of emotional business, I was overwhelmed with love. I was overwhelmed with, you know, well wishes. It was just, Charlie, there's no way I could deny it, man. You know, love truly conquers all. And so for everybody who was on social media, who was rooting and supporting and, you know, praying and fasting and all of that, guys, this is to you guys as well. I, I appreciate you guys. And then to the very special ones who also supported me offline, uh, I have my friend in the UK who actually sent me head lumps and, you know, some uh, uh, bandage strips as well as some sun cream and body lotion for Kilimanjaro. Uh, friends who gave me first aid kit, you know. So the Kilimanjaro, the mountain and me, was not an endeavor by my club and choir. It was a collective effort, collective effort, and people played different diverse roles in it, so I want to acknowledge all of them. Then lastly, I also want to acknowledge the Kilimanjaro team, you know, Ikene and then Ruta. Ikene and Ruta are the, Ikene is the lady, 
and then Ruta is the guy who was the lead guy and Kenya was the lady and then also I want to acknowledge Jimmy Paul. Jimmy Paul was my porter. He was the one who was actually carrying my heavy heavy load and my duffel bag which weighed you know I think 22 kg which was pretty pretty heavy but he was there all the way he, he you know he did his very best and I want to acknowledge him as well. So Ikene, Ruta and Jimmy Paul thank you so much so so much. So God, this is yours. My parents, I love you guys to best. DMC members, I love you guys to the moon and back. Friends and supporters on social media, tell you guys, this is life. When we support each other, great things do happen. And we learn together, we collectively grow together. So I acknowledge you guys. And then to my general team, tell you guys, without you guys, I wouldn't be here doing this. So kudos and thanks once more. All right, today's session, I want to start with a short story. A story that, you know, came to my attention only yesterday. Today is Tuesday, yeah, only yesterday. So there's this guy that I know, it's called Samuel. I, I actually happened to have gone to a car academy with him. I met him about a month before I went to Kilimanjaro at a program at Igri Botanical Gardens. He's part of the media and all of that, and he had a, an exercise media function. And I was invited to come and actually speak to them. So in the process of speaking to them and all of that afterwards, I got to, you know, we, we got connected and then realized that we went to a car together and stuff like that. So, you know, he knew about the Fajato trip, you know, you know, uh, me going to Fajato and all of those things. And then not long after that, he had put on social media that, oh, you know, actually he was actually walking, you know, and he had put on social media that he's also going to climb a Fajato. So I was really happy to have read that. So only yesterday did he send me, I think yesterday or today, yesterday's Monday, I think it was on Sunday, only he inboxed me on, uh, on Facebook Messenger that Charlie, guess what, Charlie? We actually, myself, my wife, and my 14-year-old kid, who is called Jaro, actually went to a Fajato. And whilst we were hiking, yeah, it got to a point where this our son, a 14-year-old boy, who is called Jaro, you know, was struggling. So they actually kind of like left him behind with the guide to, you know, bring him up, which is something that normally is done, you know, when you're hiking and, you know, sometimes, you, you know, if, 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 you need, you need a guide who is an expert in how to motivate, inspire, and encourage people to, you know, actually keep pushing and not give up. So they actually let me with a guide. So in his mind, you know, if I get it right, in his mind, he was not certain if Daryl, his son, 14-year-old boy, was actually going to make it to the summit. So he got to the summit with his wife, and then I do it trying to, like, you know, take pictures and all that, and then afterwards, you know, return and then go meet their son and then call it a day. So five minutes after reaching the summit, after reaching the summit, here comes Daryl with a guy, and you can and, and the video he sent me, I've watched it more than a hundred times, and every time I watch it, I am smiling. I am smiling, and I feel this joy within my soul that is so special that look, it's worth more than a billion dollars, yeah. Because for a fourteen-year-old kid to be able to summit a friend at all, where he was struggling, and he was able to actually summit and get to the top, he has conquered himself, and that experience. If he takes it seriously, he keeps it in his reservoir of experiences. Anytime he's faced with a life challenge, he's going to tap into it. He's going to remember that what he conquered a fajato or Mount Afaja. Yeah, he conquered it. And through that, he's going to be able to move on in life and succeed. So for me, as I said, the rest of my natural life, I'm going to live it in helping people find meaning to their lives. So this story that he shared with me made me so happy because guess what? This is the effect of TMC. People are watching. Some people are on the sidelines. They are doing their things quietly and things like that. Some of them from time to time will, will openly tell you, you know, what, what it means to them, what it's doing for them, how much it's impacting their lives and stuff like that. And some are also quiet, yeah, which is also fine. So first you're doing something, it is worth it. It, it's, it's worth it. So Daryl and his, you know, his father Samuel, Charlie, kudos. I'm so proud of you guys. I can't wait to see, have uh, um, Daryl, Charlie, do Kimanjaro, Everest Base Camp, or wherever one day. But this experience, do feel free if you're watching, share it with others as well, so that they can also get out there and conquer and get to what, come, you know, get to know who they are and know the power that lies and dwells within them. Okay. Now today's title. How preparation and self confidence help me summit Kilimanjaro. So there's a whole lot coming for you know for you know around this Kilimanjaro experience. Yeah, and I'm gonna take my time to really break it down because the lessons learned from it is priceless, it's priceless. And and it's something that cannot be rushed. It's, it's something that cannot be rushed because if you rush it, you're gonna miss all of it. So we're gonna take our time to really you know break it down and then you know learn from it together. Okay. So Kilimanjaro is not a walk in the park. 
It's actually 5,895 meters. It is the tallest, the highest point in Africa. So out of the seven summits, the seven yeah, yeah, summits in the world, yeah, Kilimanjaro in Africa is the tallest, okay? And yours truly, Michael, yeah, Bugatti, Kwekwitia tourist, you know, whatever, the Kili King, you know, the Lion King, Shaka Zulu, actually submitted it. Now, I said this from the beginning, that we were going to do it, and I'm going to let everybody know that, look, this is what we are going to do, we are going to do it. Let everybody know their plan, and they're going to watch me do it, right? There's a reason why I decided to do this. The reason why I decided to do this was primarily because I know that, look, when we have dreams, when we have dreams and we believe in it and we put in the effort, largely we will succeed. Even if we don't succeed the first time, we will succeed the second time. Now, let me tell you guys, self-confidence was key in me succeeding in something Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro is not a walk in the park. It's torturous, it's difficult. You're talking about seven days out there in the wilderness, in the bush, in the jungle, different elements. We'll talk about those later, yeah. It was not trivial at all, okay? But I knew that, look, it was going to be difficult. But to be able to do it, one, there has to be a dream and there has to be a plan. So the dream and ambition and the goal was what? We are going to summit Kilimanjaro. And remember, I didn't say I was going to summit Kilimanjaro in two weeks or three weeks or in a month. Ago. It took 11 months of preparation. And this preparation, I'll talk about it. But normally, before I do, let me give you a few quotes. The first one, preparation doesn't assure victory. It assures confidence. Preparation doesn't assure victory. It assures confidence. This is by Amit Kalantri. Okay? Preparation doesn't assure victory. It assures confidence. Confidence, self-confidence. So even though you prepare, it does not mean that you're ultimately always going to be successful, but it's going to give you that fundamental ingredient that you need, which is self-confidence. In our culture, in our community, in our society, most of us, when we are confident, we are seen as arrogant, we are too knowing, we are some way. Okay? For that reason, most people are beaten into submission and they try to conform. And this is what it hurts. People who move the world, people who do great things, people that give, you know, do things that we live off are not people who do ordinary things. They are people filled with confidence and belief. So it hurts me when in our part of the world, we are forced, yeah, through, I don't know whether it's our culture or upbringing or whatever it is, which all of this are part of the culture, you know, forces us to just conform, not take risks, be scared of what? Failure. And I wanted to use this opportunity as, you know, the mountain in Kilimanjaro to prove that, you know what, it, 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 we should break those barriers because guess what? What lies within us is big enough to surmount any challenge or, 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 or succeed at anything that we, we planned to do. So I set out to say, you know, guys, we are going to do Kilimanjaro. And I was bold enough to also say what? There's no plan B. There's no plan B. No plan B meaning that, look, we have to succeed at summiting Kilimanjaro. Now, where did that confidence come from? That confidence was not an arrogant confidence. That confidence came from preparation. And I knew very well that, look, if I prepare, and the good Lord that I serve, and the universe aligns, there's no way, there's no way, myself and all of us and your support and love, there's no way we will not summit Kilimanjaro. I had no doubt. I had no doubt at all. So when I said no plan B, it was not said or put out there in arrogance or, you know, excess confidence or whatever. It was based on the fact that I knew that I was preparing, I had put in the time, and the God that I serve will not deny me. Coupled with the universe aligning and the love and support from everybody else, listen, our God is not asleep. Our God is not asleep. So preparation leads to confidence. You can't really have confidence when you don't prepare. Because what's the source? That would be an illusion. The second quote reads, when you say it's hard, it's, it actually means I am not strong enough to fight for it. Stop saying it's hard. Think positive. I had done the research. I knew Kilimanjaro was tough. I signed up for eight day route. At the very end of it, the guys decided to do seven days, which made it even more difficult. I could have decided to check it out at that point. And has so many reasons why you know I could have given up, but I chose not to give up. So when you say it's hard, 
It actually means I am not strong enough to fight for it. Don't be saying it is hard. It's impossible. You see, the first thing we do when, 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 when you know, today I was just talking to a friend and I mentioned something about hiking. And I know the first thing the person said was, oh, I'm scared of heights. Always we put excuses first. We put excuses first and we deny ourselves because we want to stay and live within that comfort zone that does not yield us any serious return. And you cannot, you cannot achieve great things when you don't get out of your comfort zone. So whatever is holding us down, where we feel so comfortable, we are content with the level that we have, which ultimately just leads us to exist and not live, we need to break it. So stop saying it's hard. Say it's possible. Positive thinking is key, which also feeds into what? Confidence. Okay? Then the third and last one reads, there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. I'll take this again. There are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. For most people who know me, I've always embraced failure. This key trip that we had in mind that we wanted to do, success was not the first option. The first option was failure. When you get out of your comfort zone to try something that you've never done before, you, be, you know, the, 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 the most reasonable, logical outcome is failure and not success. And not success. But I remember one of the episodes, I said that, look, if, it, if I go and I don't succeed, I know I put in my best and I'll go back and do it again. So failure should not hold us down. The fear of failure should not stop us. But success is a choice. You choose to succeed and it starts with what? Preparation, which leads to self-confidence. And that is how we're able to submit it. But what is self-confidence really? Self-confidence means trusting in your own judgment capacities and abilities. So self-confidence means trusting in your own judgment, your own judgment, capacities and abilities. Guys, when I was planning and training and doing all of that, there were so many things that were said from well-meaning people with different reasons why, you know, I should stop what I was doing, I was training too much, why would you be doing, I eat myself up and down, you go to a fire too and go and sleep in the tent, all of those things. But I knew the mission at hand. I knew the difficulty. I knew the, 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 the monsters that are gonna be out there waiting for me. So when you are, when you prepare and you are preparing, self-confidence allows you to do what? Trust your own judgment. So listen to people, but process it <coughs> Pardon me. Process it and use whatever is worth, you know, is, is worthy and use it. But trust your own capacities and abilities. Your own abilities. Okay. Self confidence is key. It's an ingredient we all need. Need for what? Success. So do not let anybody, anybody, put you down by saying, Charlie, you you you're the rush. You're overconfident. You're some weak. You're whatever. Listen. This is your life. Be as confident as an eagle that can that you know can fly above the clouds. Guess what, Charlie? Yours truly don't mill that. Don't kill me. I've walked above the clouds in Kilimanjaro. Uhu peak. Come and meet me. Come and meet me. I've walked it. And that view, my brothers and sisters, is priceless. And what got me there? Hard work, self-belief, and self-confidence. So if you're listening, if you have dreams. If you put it under your pillow, go shake them. It's about time to wake up. Yeah, my brothers and sisters, it's about time to wake up. Now, at Kili, let me share some of the scars and you know challenges that I have. I'm not going to talk a lot about most of them, but there's time for that. I fell down when we first got there. Then we got on the Tuesday. I think on Wednesday we went for you know just some warm up. So we went to the markets and I went to like three different waterfalls. On the third waterfall, you know we were just having a good time there. And taking pictures and things like that, and actually fell down face flat in the water with the stones and the rocks. I busted my lower leg. I fell down. That was my first accident. I fell down. I busted my lower, you know, my, my, my lower leg. It was cool. Now, whilst we were hiking, I bumped my forehead against a big rock ahead of which I didn't see. So I got a big bump here on my forehead. Okay? I got a big bump on my forehead. I smiled when you know I touched my forehead then because it was hurt and I realized that I had you know I had you know uh, hurt myself. 
And the third challenge I had was severe fever. Charlie, my brothers and sisters, I'm talking about severe fever. It was brutal. And in all of this, any time I felt the challenge, I will smile and I will laugh. And I don't recollect any time in my life, my life where I have smiled and laughed as much as the seven days in Kilimanjaro. Because anytime I was confronted with something different that I was not used to, I would just smile and laugh because I knew that what those were things coming at me that were meant to stop me from what succeeding. Okay? Now the harder part, the thing that got me the most, which most people don't know, is I'm not recovering because I took time off when I got back, was I actually got lung infection. So when we descend, I think the night before, I had serious pain on my right part of my body, my torso, over here, yeah, on the right. And, but because the adrenaline and determination was there, I, you know, I, I ignored it. But when we descended and I got to the hotel that night, with my knee hurting so bad, my legs in pain, my body in pain, and then now this lung infection, I think at that point it kind of like I developed seriously. So now I, if, you, if I breathe in, I inhale, it hurts. If I lie on it, it hurts. <coughs> Excuse me. So you see, I still, I'm still exhibiting, you know, the symptoms of the lung infection. I'm treating it so it's going, so no worries, yeah? So, and it hurts so bad that I look back at it and I'm like, was it really worth it? Of course it was worth it. Here's the thing. You can't get out of your comfort zone and not expect bruises and challenges. You can't expect that you're going to live uh, 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 at Fajato and then go to Kilimanjaro and be the same. No, you're going to definitely take a hit. And you have to be prepared for it. But my confidence and the research and all the things I have done, I mean that no matter what may come, I'll be able to survive it. So the lung infection really got me. The body kick, it, it was serious, like brutal, brutal. The, 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 the last day, the descent day, is crazy. So you're talking from summit nights to descent, you're talking about 14 hours. My brothers, we'll talk about that experience later, yeah? Then the lack, lack of sleep, I could just not sleep. The most I slept in a day, was an hour 45 minutes. Like a whole day, I would have, sometimes I'll get like 45 minutes. I couldn't sleep because I was sleeping in the tent. The tent was uncomfortable. It was, the, the, it was totally iced, you know. The, I mean, Charlie, just a host of different things. So look, I had a million and one reasons why I could just call the guys and say, Charlie, guys, I think I was dreaming of more for me. It's about time to go. But self-confidence and the preparatory work I had done, I knew that, look, I had to work my own. And guess what? When I was going, I actually weighed 92 kg. When I got back, I weighed 86. I have lost 6 kg. And it's interesting because a good number of friends will always, you know, DM me and say, Michael, Charlie, why all of a sudden, why are you aged like that? You look old, old. Charlie, all of a sudden, you're looking old, old, and all things like that. Because guess what? I was being drained. And we all like looking pretty and handsome and, and, and beautiful and things like that. But the choice was, look, would I rather look old? And be able to achieve something that is priceless that will really reinvent me or stay pretty and then not really have much all right so so when you're pushing yourself be mindful and know that look you're going to take a hit in certain things depending on what you're doing okay which is fine if ultimately the reward the outcome is way way significant and bigger than what you're going through yeah and i knew very well that look of course i'm no more a 24 year old and i'm i'm, I'm, I'm growing i'm aging as well but yes, I push my body, I push myself to the point where I think losing 6 kg is significant, yeah. And I got to the airport, I think some of the guys were laughing at me because my jeans was falling off and I was looking at all lean and, you know, stuff like that. But I went to battle. I cannot come back looking like I did before I went, okay. So these were some of the things that really, really got me. But I was able to overcome them because of the preparatory work that was done. That was done, okay. Now, Kilimanjaro, I said, I didn't go there to conquer Kili. So we're saying, hey, Kili will fall, Kili must fall, Kili must fall, in, a, in all of those things. I went there to conquer me. And to conquer me, what it means is that, guess what? I have all of these ideas. I have, I believe I am this, I am that, and all of that. I wanted to go and see for myself that truly, am I able to do those things? Can I be greedy? Can I persevere? Can I be relentless? Can I stay focused? Can I come up with strategies that will help me succeed? Can I, can I work with people? Can I socialize with strangers? Can I, I mean, so many things here. Yeah, I wanted to experience it and see. And my brothers and sisters, when you are on top, so you're going through all of it and you're on top. And Uhuru Peak is also called House of God, the roof of Africa. It is it's indescribable. My 
my attempt at it will not do justice to it. When you see the beautiful sunrise against the clouds, when you see the blue skies, and you see the clouds underneath you, and you look at the soil, the ground, there's nothing you can conquer. But to get there, you have to put in the work. You have to put in the work. Now, what did we actually do? What did I actually do to prepare? TMC, we talked about the daily walks. So most of the time, well, I wake up at 5 a.m. and go for my morning walk. Or morning walk and jog. Daily. Then on Saturdays, TMC, that's my crew, we either go to Greek Gardens or Lake Home or, you know, La Bomba Beach, some, you know, we have something like La Bali Beach. We go to all of these different places and go and walk. And we're doing this month on month. Weekend on Saturday, every Saturday, you know, we, we're doing all of that. So on Saturdays, the team will meet, we we'll all go do that on, on a, you know, on a daily basis. I will go and, you know, I'll do my morning jogs in the evening. Sometimes I'll add cycling to it. All of this was preparation towards Kilimanjaro. Okay. We did a beach runs as well. Then a few months towards, you know, the showdown, I did a year and that's Ayyman Sand, that's it from the Pediasi Lodge all the way to Ayyman you know, from Ayyman Sand, that is a tow booth all the way to Pediasi and then back. So the, I did it for five days. So the first day, I did, you know, five times. And each lap is about five miles, yeah? And I did it five times. But on the second day, I got an injury. I got an injury that bugged me the rest of the four days. But instead of stopping, and the interesting thing was that many people along the line were encouraging me to stop. But they didn't know the mission I had. Did you know the promise I had made to myself, to my God, and to everybody else who was following TMC and what we have put out there? Because I knew very well that if I was in Kili and I was faced with adversity, was I going to give up? I said no. So I had to limp Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with that sore, that, that pain, which was on my right ankle as well as my lower right shin. Okay? So there's pain. There is real pain. There is discomfort. But what you have to do is you have to keep your eye on the goal. Why are you doing it? And if what I am doing is going to impact the life of a Daryl, a 14-year-old boy somewhere, trust me, then it's worth the sacrifice. It's worth the sacrifice. And this is how we live. We have to do things that impacts what humanity and, and, and elevates all of us. Awaken something deep inside us so that we rise to the levels that look Charlie, we all look back and we're like, wow, did I just do that? Then we went to do six nights and seven days in Afrika. You know, the first day we went there, Class Clemens and Charles and myself, we went there. It rained. It rained, it rained, it rained. When it was done, that week was done, we had hiked Afrika ten times. Ten times, my brothers and sisters, ten times. And most people thought it was insane. And in, in, in those nights, we slept in tents. But you know what's interesting? On the fifth day, which was the Friday, when we did Afaja so three times back to back, on the third descent, I knew that I was going to succeed at Kilimanjaro. Because at that point, I was convinced that my legs were strong enough. I didn't feel any pain. I just knew I was ready. I knew I was ready. And here's the beautiful thing about preparation. As you're doing it, you're going along. Initially, it may not seem as if you're making progress. But if you start monitoring, you start listening to your body, and you start paying attention, you're going to start realizing that mm, things are changing. You're going to realize how you're feeling. You're going to realize how you're walking, how you're talking. You know, a whole lot of things that starts changing. Okay? So when we finished Afajato, the, the, the six, nine, seven days, I knew that Kili was in the bag. Now, to top it, we came and we added the 21 kilometers millennium marathon, you know, run to it as well. Not only was I doing that, also I was feeding my mind. Because mindset is key. I tell people that look, what I experienced in key, I think physical requirement is about 10 percent, but 90 percent of it is mindset. It's mindset. So as somebody who has already, you know, you know, committed to reading and, and improving his mindset and feeding his mind constantly. Yeah, and getting his mind, you know, at a certain place, you know, I was already ready mentally. So I knew that, look, I will succeed at, you know, healing. So when I put it at a look, plan, all of that, it was a combination of things. 
So preparation is key. You cannot achieve, you cannot transform without putting the effort. You can't go start and stop. You have to finish. You have to finish. You have to finish. You have to finish. And I'm not saying that everybody should go and plant Kilimanjaro. Your Kilimanjaro could be, look, you're reading 12 books in 12 months. That, could, that target could be your Kilimanjaro, that's your mountain. Read a number of pages a day. Read a book a month. And at the end of the 12 months, you have read your 12 books. That will be your Kilimanjaro. Don't settle, my brothers and sisters. Don't. Don't. I have a living testimony. Yeah? And most of you who are watching, let me be frankly honest. Let me be frankly honest. Your life suck. You're, you're trapped. You're, you're, you're in dark places. You're all putting on appearances. You're all, most people are unhappy. You're, you know, we're just existing. Let's be frank. We, 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 we sugar coat things, we hide things, we embellish and all of that. No! I can say it because guess what? I am human and I've been there. Sometimes waking up is like a chore. You're like, why are you here? Life sucks. It's boring. It's not fun. Yeah? It's just life. But you have to find a way to reinvent yourself. And nobody can do that for you. You are the only person who can do that. And you owe it to your maker and humanity for you to live your best life. So let's stop making excuses. Let's stop making excuses. Collectively, we have submitted Kilimanjaro, my brothers and sisters. It is not my Kilimanjaro who submitted. We did it together. There's no way I could have done it alone. And any time I posted on social media the updates, the speed at which people reply and comment and all of that, I was like, okay, what is happening? I never felt anything like that in my entire life. And for the days that I don't even post on time, the kind of attacks I get when I come online, you know, I'm like, okay, what is happening? What did I do wrong? Because guess what now? Everybody or most people were rooting for what? Success. People were rooting for success. And when I was done, the kind of conversations that I've had. God is great. I can only say God is great. Let's never underestimate that. Let us not sell our thoughts short. This is it. This is the time. Draw a line after this episode. If you get to watch, say, hey, you know what? I am going to reinvent myself. I'm going to relive. I'm going to be the best version of me. I'm going to be the best version of me. Yeah? Try it, it works. I have done it. I have done it. This is not theory. I have done it. Set those big goals and go after it. Now, let me place on record. The other thing I've also learned is let us not stop people who dream from pursuing their dreams. If you're watching, you're listening. And I have a dream and I have a goal and I put it out there. Don't tell me I cannot do it or I should not do it. Tell me how we are going to do it. And this should not go for just me. If anybody were to come to you to tell you that, hey, I have this dream, I have this goal, I want to do this. Don't tell them why they can't do it. Pull a chair and have a conversation with them. Say, okay, this thing that you want to do, wow, it is, it's, 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 it's humongous. It's bold. It's scary. It's scary. But how are we going to do it? And then start having constructive conversations. Let's remove sentiments. Yes, there are certain conversations where sentiments will be in. But let us place them properly. Let's place them properly. Because guess what? What I have experienced in Kilimanjaro, I am back. I am back. Because guess what? I wanted to reinvent myself. I haven't been able to do it. When I reflect and I think of the experience, I am unstoppable. I am a conqueror. Only God can stop me. And this is grounded in what I saw on my way to the house of God, the roof of Africa. So if anybody comes to you, if you don't have anything to say, don't say. But don't discourage people. But my advice is... See how you can help them succeed at those dreams and goals. Because guess what? Whatever you don't know what it will mean to them. You don't know. I have been through it. And when you're in tune with nature and you connect and you find hope, 
not in human beings, but in, in, in nature, something that the God has created. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Anybody who breaks your heart, any jobs that you lose, any setbacks, pales, you will overcome them. You overcome them. That being said, February, March, Mount Everest Base Camp is happening. September 2023, Todd Du Mont Blanc is coming live. We're going to do that. That takes you around France, Italy, and Switzerland. My brothers and sisters, if you plan for your vacations, split into two. Let's hike and then add the vacation. Take your hiking books, your, 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 your walking shoes, running shoes, split the vacation time. Let us hike, let us walk. Yeah, let's have conversations. Don't just go to Dubai, go to Santorini or wherever, and just say you want to go and chill, and that's about it. That's fine. But add physical fitness and health to it. Because at the end of the day, the best investment you can ever make is what investing in your physical, in, in your what? Your physical health, which ultimately will affect your mental health, your spirituality, and your emotional business. Most of us think that oh, it's all about Charlie waking up and going to work and making money and things like that. Charlie, look, if you are bedridden and you are screwed and your health is poor, what have you done? It's cost 90. Let us be smart. Let us be smart. So if you're listening, I encourage you, if you have a girlfriend, you have a boyfriend, uh, you have a good friend, say, guys, Charlie, look, every week, let's go for a walk. Go for a walk. Out of the noise, just see some nature, some trees, some whatever it is. Just, just get out. If you have a partner, you guys are fighting. Invite your partner. And say, hey, we don't have to talk. Let's just go for a walk. Invite a coworker. Go for a walk. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Where you will find yourself, you have no idea. Life is not what we are living. By just waking up and going to work every day. Yeah? Just going to work every day, every day, every day like robots. Without what true meaning. Get out there and take care of yourself. When you have that connection, trust me, trust me, it's priceless. On this note, I want to say a big thank you to everybody else who has been part of the Mental Catalyst, the Mountain Main Kilimanjaro. Charlie, we've done it. There's going to be more episodes. There's going to be an in-person one-on-one you know, such where I'm going to actually tell the story of the experience of Kilimanjaro. When we are ready, we're going to share all the information so that you guys can come in, you know, in person or actually catch it online. But do not miss this. If you're watching this, share it with friends, loved ones, or whatever it is. Let us live. Let us succeed together. So on this note, thank you so much. And I'm back, yeah? So this is yours truly, Don Mella. Kimi King, Bugatti, Shaka Zulu, oh, now let me tell you. When you hear, anytime you watch the videos and you hear oh la la, anytime we are going, the going gets tough and I'm like, Charlie, I'm, I'm, I'm about to give it up, I'll say oh la la. Then all of them will start saying oh la la, oh la la. It means that, Charlie, look, we need to pause, we need to take a break. Yeah, we need to take a break. That experience, it's, it's the most beautiful thing, man. It's the most, most beautiful thing. And I really wish most of you can do it. And if you can't, Let's find your own little human jars, but let's do it. Yeah. But guys, let's live and let's be smart. Thank you so much, and I love you guys. Bye-bye.